go around the table and everybody reduce himself real quick. Scott Carroll, General Manager, Costa Mesa Sanitary District. Vicki Snell, uh, Newport Mesa Trustee. Brenda Morrill, Superintendent, Newport Mesa. Zane O'Connor, Newport Mesa Trustee. Lorianne Carroll Harrison, New City Manager for Costa Mesa. <laughs> Paul Schoenberger, General Manager, Mesa Water District. John Stevens, Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. Uh, Justin Martin, Park City Community Services. Connor Lock, Chief of Staff of the Mayor and City Council, City of Costa Mesa. Mike Schaefer, Costa Mesa Sanitary District Director. I'm Bob Luton, I'm currently Vice President of Costa Mesa Sanitary District. My name is Schaefer, Costa Mesa Sanitary District. James uh, Fisher, oh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, director. <laughs> James Fisher, Director of Mesa Water District. I'll try to get a little more. I'm Jim Ferryman, President of Costa Mesa Sanitary District. And I think we all ought to thank Scott for this wonderful spread. I mean, it's the one. You had nothing to do with it. It's all Melani. Melani. Enjoy, folks. Thank you. Okay. We're going to get along here. First up is Newport Mesa Unified School District. No, I think I think we're up number one. Yeah. Get the wrong agenda, Jim. Okay, President, uh, pump station reconstruction. That's over on the west side. Yeah, I got things for them. I'm going to turn it over to our district engineer, Rob Hammers, and he's going to uh, briefly brief the committee on all the projects we've been working on. Hi, thank you, members. Nice to see a full house. I know you're very busy, so we'll try to do a quick presentation here. So, uh, our president pump station is hunkered back in the corner in an easement at the end of the south end of President cul de sac. And hey, Rob? Yes? Can you, can you use that mic? To sure. To argue you. Thank you. So, the, the pump station's back in an easement on 2043 President Place, and this was our first design that we were going to reconstruct the entire pump station. Uh, we put it out to bid. It was a little bit expensive, $2.2 million. So we're currently going to probably do alternative two, which was to reuse the existing vault. We did some structural testing on it yesterday, and we're going to do structural analysis of the existing vault, make sure it's okay. And that way it would save the cost of that structure, uh, sh make the footprint a little bit smaller, and hopefully we can get this to approximately $1.5 million for uh, pretty much brand new pumps, valve vault, and everything else. And we already built the force main that goes from here all the way to the intersection of Hamilton and Pomona. And at, as you know, there is a pedestrian access to Canyon Park through here. And I've talked with this person here, and they have, it's really a prescriptive easement. It's not of record. So we both agreed to keep the access. So we have it designed more thoroughly looking in this alternative, but it's going to go down where the orange is. That will be the path that gets out to the park. So we may have to close the access during construction, but we're going to put it back and making it look very nice. So, uh, and that's our President Pump Station project. If there's any questions, you're just welcome to blurt them out. And pardon? Uh, we're probably going to design in the next two to three months, so probably at the end of this year, calendar year. So thank you, Raja. Okay, this project's in Newport Beach. I'm skipping down to number 321, Indus Street, phase two, sewer main relocation. This is 
Santa Ana Avenue. This is flood control channel in Bristol Street. Fairway Villas Apartments. It's in Newport Beach. Uh, our sewer was here and the buildings were built in the easement almost over the sewer main. And uh, we and everyone at the district inherited this. It was well before my time as well. It was in the 50s. The sewer obviously went in first and for some reason uh, they built way too close to it. So our sewer main is there under the back patios. It's in distress right here because this whole apartment complex was sinking. And so we are going to go back to here and we're under construction now. We're going to go back to here and we're going to come over here in their park and come down here and go back down to this manhole here. The flow goes this way and it follows the kind of the south side of the flood control channel all the way to Irvine Avenue. So uh, we're very fortunate that this did not get crushed and we have an emergency. So uh, we're very fortunate there. Uh, moving to the last project, emergency project. Can you, can you? I, I, okay, I'll take that next then. Thank you. So uh, our number 319 Canyon Force Main and Pump Station Rehabilitation, that is under construction right now. And they are they've almost ready to start drilling. The force main will go from the intersection of Canyon and Wilson to Wilson and National. That's the length of the project. We also are rehabilitating the pump station in the intersection of, of Canyon and Wilson. And for that, that, actually the intersection will be closed for a little bit, just for the pump station work, not the force main work. And uh, we have our traffic control permits through the city. Raja, Raja has a transportation background. So the city's always uh, very strict about making sure one lane is open in each direction. They wanted us to wait until school was out. Uh, we agreed. So uh, that's why we're starting now. And there, uh, the contractor will actually be, he's ready to start drilling come Monday. We're using horizontal directional drilling, which is a no dig technology to minimize the impact on the street and on the residents. We've used that technology for three other projects. It's worked out very well. And those were next to the intersections and through the intersections of Wilson and Harbor, Victorian Harbor, and then uh, on the President Force Main. Uh, moving on to the last project, Bristol Street Siphon Emergency Project. That is right next to the Acapulco restaurant. And the siphon kind of got too much sand in the bottom. A siphon works by the upstream side, then the pipe goes down under the flood control channel and back up. And as long as the upstream side is higher than the downstream side, the, the, it's, called, it's technically an inverted siphon, it will work. So we've done some reconstruction of the barrels, as they're called, the pipe, and that is finished except for repaving the street. And Raja asked us to work at night when we were taking two lanes. We did that. And when we did the part where we only needed one lane, uh, they allowed us to work during the day. So we work hand in hand with the city of Costa Mesa and very well. And we have been for years. 
our engineering people and the cities have a great relationship. It's worked out long term. It's, it's just excellent. And that is those four capital improvement projects. You can see we're very busy. So as I'm sure uh, Mesa Water is too, and the city. Any questions or anything? Thank you, Rob. I just want to point out, we, there are some pictures on the table of the bypass pump we had to uh, uh, put in place for the siphon emergency project. You can see the elaborate piping we had to do for the bypassing. Um, all the work was done in the evening. Correct. And, uh, this was uh, quite an extensive project, unanticipated project, which the board will probably have a sticker shot. <laughs> Very good, I'll, I'll take the lead on that. Um, our number one legislative priority for the last two years has been to defeat the uh, proposed water tax. And uh, that has been achieved. So uh, we're, we're very happy about that. Yeah. Um, the, the proposal was to turn all the water districts and cities that have water departments uh, in California into tax collectors and to um, tax uh, one to five dollars a month from residential to commercial every month, uh, generating um, 60 to 80 million dollars. Um, and uh, of course, you know, that's available for additional um, bump ups uh, at any time. And the money was. Um, uh, the problem that they're trying to solve is is that there was has, there are some um, small communities, mostly in the Central Valley agricultural areas, that do not have access to good water. Um, but you know that's probably uh, folks have looked at that about a hundred million to a two hundred million dollar problem, a one time fix, either hook them up to, to nearby communities or, or put some treatment on their wells. Uh, but this was a 60 to 80 million dollar tax every year forever, right? So uh, working with our um, industry uh, group, Aqua, the Association of California Water Agencies, uh, we, were, we were able to kind of um, redirect the funding source for that. So we were thinking that that money, uh, you know, because that is a good cause to, to help those folks out. Maybe that should come from the, the general fund. Um, Sacramento, the creativity said, well, you know, these folks, they have to, they don't have great water, so they have to drive to the store a lot um, to get bottled water. So if we solve this problem, there won't be so much driving that helps greenhouse gas. So we'll take the, the carbon credit uh, uh, fund, the fund that we have, and we'll use that to fund uh, the, the needed. So that was really, really a, a big battle. Uh, we want to thank uh, our representative in Sacramento and everybody else. We work very closely with Aqua. Like most uh, trade organizations, they rely a lot on their um, constituents, their member agencies. Um, we're very active in it. I'm the chair of the Water Management Committee. We have a member on their ledge committee. Um, Director D. Pasquale is on communications, Director Duane is on the Federal Affairs, and uh, Director Fissler is on the Local Governance Committee. Um, or for CSDA, right? Yep. Yep, yep. And, and um, so, so we stay active. Uh, there are probably every year six or seven bills that we very actively um, follow. Uh, and, and this was one of these uh, rare uh, victories, uh, so that was very good. You can imagine after the you know huge drought, five-year drought, some folks say one in one thousand-year drought. There's been a lot of you know we've been water legislation heavy for the last few years. Uh, last year, conservation, um, a couple of conservation bills passed, and there will be 
about 20 new regulations that will be that we're now helping craft that will be coming out over the next 10 years to uh, to uh, employ that. I have a question. You know, because of the drought was so long. Mm -hmm. You know, um, how and now that we are overflowing with you know, and still, I mean, Dr. Navarro said there's still snow packed and mammoth over yeah. the summer. Yeah. And my daughter was at Kern River and they couldn't put the kids in because it was flowing from that. How's the infrastructure for all of that? water that's coming. Are we finding now right. new things? So the, the um, to kind of um, take advantage of these heavy years, because right. that's the whole challenge is the, is the, the light rain years and the heavy rain right. years. Uh, what kind of equalizes it and make it all work is storage. Yeah. Okay, but increasing storage in California is a very tough thing to do. Um, there has was a previous proposition that had, uh, you know, I think a billion dollars in for increased storage. None of that money's been let out yet, but uh, uh, it passed. Right. Yeah, but to, if you can store that water, you know, boom, when it comes in the couple of months, it comes rushing down the, the, the mountains, and then you can kind of feed it into the system after that. But all the reservoirs in Southern California, Northern California, are you know at the brink right now. Right. Yeah. When I fly up to Sacramento, I, I sit in the window seat on the right so I can see. I can yeah, check out all check out well, the snow pack that. and all the re reservoirs. The on the way up. Yeah, exactly. Just, just count them off as they go up. Yeah. Well, isn't this? I think we just got a presentation. This is the largest snowpack we've ever had in the Right. right. Wow. So that's good for all of us. Yeah, just keep yeah. on snowing. It's just being yeah, man. Yeah. Right. yeah, so from, from tough times to good times. Yep. And in the good times, we forget about the tough. Yeah. In the tough times, mm -hmm. we forget about the good. Yeah. No, but we need to make sure that we have water in California <coughs> to change. Things to change. Yep. So that's our report. Thank you, Paul. Yep. Very good. Uh, SRO assignment. Uh, new coordination here by school district. Yes, I, I was one that put that on there, um, and I'm so glad Lori is here today because we had such a great relationship with the previous city manager and, and um, his understanding of how important it is to partner with the district on some of these projects, um, and some of them are on here. But this one, um, with um, the, the priority always from safety for our students um, and the... Um, school shootings um, and the recent security analysis that we did, we really felt that it was, we wanted to have three SROs and, at, in each city. And Newport Beach has given us three so that um, two um, can pretty much be at the high school <coughs> most of the day. I'm sorry, you guys are on different. <laughs> the high school most of the day. And um, then the other SRO can be at elementary school, and there's a presence. Um, a presence that's very different from just a security person, um, because it's the police. And um, I guess I was, um, I know um, that the police department, your um, employees or your officers are down. You don't have enough officers. That's what I've been told anyway. We're 127 right now. We're budgeted for 136. And so the chief is really the one that gets to decide where to deploy those officers based on need. And um, I don't think, I mean, that's something, so are you asking to add a third officer? Is that a question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just making sure I understand the question. Uh, so, uh, and I think that right now with our new city manager in, uh, Ms. Farrah Harrison is really working on the budget and getting up to speed on what's happening with the budget, finding opportunities. Um, but it's unlikely this budget cycle that we mm -hmm. can add a third SRO officer. Um, probably the better approach, and um, we can talk to the chief about this, is to maybe ask him if he can maybe rotate someone in. I just don't see the budget yeah. being able to. And, and currently, we and are. That's his, his, yeah. that's his discretion to deploy that. Yeah. Currently, we are. They are rotating in it, but it's overtime. And we're we're paying obviously for the overtime. It's half time 
it's 20 hours, I believe, over time. So we're currently paying all that, whereas the other two SROs, we kind of split the, right. the thing. And then um, I, I recently saw some th a memo on Facebook, and there was a concern that, um, that he was being asked to cut um, overtime hours and that perhaps um, that was one of the things he might cut along along with the um, there's no overtime that's technically been cut the overtime from last year that's why you really can't look at Facebook as your source <laughs> <laughs> no I know but it was a, but, it, but it wasn't yeah, an but opinion John and I wrote a very detailed oh, letter it was the letter that was on there we I wrote saw a the letter. letter yeah right but that was a misunderstanding frankly oh, okay Oh, um, okay. so, so his budget is up in overtime okay. over last year, but, and we'll keep adjusting, but the real issue is, I mean, you don't have to be worrying about that, where okay. the money comes from. It's I, a yeah, matter yeah. of um, working with the chief to let him know that he would like to have some kind of a rotation. The, and maybe the chief we has can, been very good. I, I just want to make sure he understood. He's, he's just short staffed and he yeah. assigned someone. Uh, our, our issue is, you know, I guess you're a victim of, the, of your own success. Mm -hmm. uh, SROs are, are incredible. Oh, they're great. Yeah. And having them assigned full time, they get to know our kids. Mm -hmm. Not that the guys who come in from us uh, from patrol aren't good; they're great too. And our and our and our, and our principal are very very pleased with the work we're getting. But there's just something about having someone that's uh, right. I 100 percent agree with you. You yeah. know that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as a former school board member yeah. and a mom of recent graduates, I 100 percent agree with you. It's not really a matter, even if you offered to pay for it for us, it wouldn't even yeah. be a matter of that. It's that we don't have enough police yeah. officers to, uh, to yeah. assign. But we didn't want you to think that they weren't doing the best. No, they are. They are. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Know. Know. So, and then also park rangers was, was mentioned. That's still not in danger of having the park rangers not. No officers have been cut. Okay. Good. <laughs> we so, dispelled the myth. Okay. There are no cuts to the oh, police okay. budget related good. to staffing. Okay, good. Um, so, <laughs> park ranger recruitment. So, I guess. Yeah. So and I guess police recruitment. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I guess the only I, I just want to make sure it's on everybody's um, um, radar that we you know would love a, a third we officer. Have parents asking too. Yeah. They, you know, they like being. Where would you <laughs> like the third officer assigned? It would be great. Uh, well, it well, would, uh, you know, part of what we'd like to do is have a, more of a presence at our elementary schools and have the third officer cover when the officers of the high schools aren't there. So they're all in four day weeks. Mm -hmm. So there's one day at each of the school at each of the schools when they're not really full time there. Now some of the sometimes the, the SROs take the overtime to do that and that's great. But mm -hmm. you know we still have that one day a week at each of the schools where there isn't coverage. And we don't and we really would like to have a more of a relationship part with our elementary schools too on the three other days where they could be throughout mm -hmm. the district. Well, maybe John and I could talk to the city manager about use of our reserve officer. Like oh, yeah. That would be great. For elementary school. A little less intense at the elementary school. Exactly. <laughs> and it gives them a, it gives them a, because they don't know the difference, and it gives them, <laughs> it gives them a, a, a good uh, relationship with the police department, you know, to, to start it early. Future recruits. Future recruits, yes. Well, we've had a lot of things averted because um, students at the high school have felt comfortable talking to the SRO. Mm -hmm. So here's one way you can help us with recruitment. What? Uh, is that, you know, the, I think the chief has a great team trying to recruit officers. It's very, very hard to recruit police officers right now. One, it's a difficult job that no one mm -hmm. wants to do anymore. Mm -hmm. um, to the background clearance, it's very difficult for mm -hmm. people to get through because, um, you know, it's just people make decisions early in high school mm -hmm. that eliminate their opportunity mm -hmm. and they can't ever be a police officer. Mm -hmm. um, and so if, if we could um, work with you and maybe, I've said this for a while, the football teams are a really great recruiting mm -hmm. grounds for because if you could get them as freshmen or as junior high students who want to go into the explorers and they automatically start knowing you can't do this, you can't do that, you, you really, mm -hmm. if you do this, you're mm -hmm. never going to be a police officer. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there's a way to solidify that um, 
that relationship a little bit better. It's very informal right now. Yeah. But, no, that's, um, that's a great idea. To, and it fits in with our CTE programs. Yeah. Um, so, so that's, a, that's yeah. an opportunity. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a great opportunity. Okay, thank you. Okay, I want to move on to uh, the day the skies are healed. Okay. <laughs> I just wondered, um, and we, we have Gordon Bowley here um, as well, if I don't know if he has anything to say about this, but I just, I know that this is something, one of the things that's been on the table for a really long time, um, and I know it, your current budget is um, hacked, <laughs> and so what is the future? Um, what do you see as the future for this project? Have you, so... We haven't received your vote on this yet. That's part of it. So we, we this is still a, a project that's on our capital improvement project list. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But since it wasn't ready, it wasn't shovel ready to build this mm -hmm. fiscal year, mm -hmm. we redirected some of those funds. Not all of the funds. Mm -hmm. I think it was $625,000 of the funds. So there's still a more than a million dollars sitting in an account line. It's there. Yes. Oh, okay. See, that's why you got to ask the sources. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well. Uh, yeah. That's uh, what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm glad. So there's still more than a million dollars sitting in the account line. Okay. But we directed six hundred twenty-five thousand to a storm drain improvement project mm -hmm. that was a critical need mm -hmm. that we had to do. Um, mm -hmm. But the project is still in your. So I don't know where it's it is. kind of in our courts. So we, uh, uh, we, uh, we, uh, came up, we came up with a new lease agreement for the city. Oh, we haven't seen that yet. Uh, okay. So that's oh, in the draft. Yeah. It's in the draft. So you're the attorney, I think, are looking at it. Uh, but so has your school board seen it? Yeah, yes. we've seen it, but we... Not the latest, I mean... Not from the yeah. city. Well, we haven't seen it yet. No, you haven't. Well, I'm working. saying we as an account. So we're in multiple drafts <laughs> since that version. We've been some changes back and forth. Uh, the district has presented that Davis be the first in front of Kaiser because uh, mm -hmm. there's less of challenges, obviously, mm -hmm. in this location. Mm -hmm. uh, so our next meeting is on the 8th. Uh, I'm bringing, um, I'll have those two. Tim or Kirk, who's taking the lead? Uh, well, Tim on the, on the legal end. Okay. So I'll have those comments back to him uh, in regards to all different areas in there. But that's kind of the draft one that we're going to go with is the Davis. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't you put it on the city council agenda for closed session before we... That's a great idea. Give them back the draft. Yeah, you can see it more. Uh, but we are, yeah, so uh, just so that you know that, that this is, a, we try to structure this so that it would be the most economically efficient uh, process for the city as well and uh, provide you with uh, you know, the, the control and, and the operation that you need. So it's almost like your property after a certain hour. So, mm -hmm. Uh, we're ready. Uh, the board did approve this process. Uh, the next part is we uh, probably need to go into, I don't know what the, if you're going to have the expo account in it or not. <coughs> I think that got taken out of the recent year. We're going to have a capital agreement on it. Well, the city is going to do the project. So we, so we have, si have $625,000 in our current fiscal year budget. What's likely to be the expenses in the fiscal year on but this project. I thought it was more no, we don't have six hundred twenty-five thousand. It's it's over a million. No, I know, but we have six hundred. We have we have, That's we what's have remaining. Oh, remaining is six hundred twenty-five thousand. We had we had uh, one point two five uh, million, and then we redirected some of that to storm drain, leaving six hundred twenty-five thousand. So, what what do we think? What do we think is going to be spent in th this fiscal year? Well, uh, if you turn the page, I see start with design. Yeah, start with design. And design, if you get the architect, then that's going to be over a million dollars. Yeah, so okay. for, for both both sides, it's going to be over a million dollars. So if you, if you split it and do it in phases, it could be, Davis can be, you know, start with that's a percentage. Okay. Well, before we then, decide on which school to start with, exactly. here's my <laughs> suggestion. Um, we have this amazing representative now in Sacramento, uh, Kalisus North, and I think this this project, whether whatever school it is, mm -hmm. is a perfect project to kind of have a joint, collaborative ask do the Assemblywoman's office for getting into next year's fiscal budget, as well as for 
possibility of working with TPA, who's our consultant, to obtain some kind of park bonds or whatever grants are out there. Mm -hmm. So I think that we should not only just worry about the contract and the, um, you know, the design, but we should also maybe start thinking about how do we tee this up so that we can get some outside funding for this so that our two entities are not the only ones paying for it. Yeah. No, that, that's great. It, um, it's just this, this agreement is taking years, and if we can at least get that part, um, I know the funding's part of the agreement, but you know what I mean. It's Absolutely. the other. One of the things the council did say at the budget mm -hmm. adoption was that the money that was taken out, we'd like to see a plan for that to be brought back right. forward as well. I agree with you. I think I initiated an iteration of this project in 2008. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. I know. And, e and everybody wants it. Uh, so, um, okay. So I guess the only reason I put it on to get an update and, and to like um, make it I, I know there's a million, pro we have a million priorities as well, but to try to be more, um, uh, to move it forward. Do you have a lobby for a second? Or no? Yeah, you do. Okay. Ooh. So, uh, yes, oh. yes, yes, we do. Maybe we, all, <laughs> maybe we could have a separate meeting that's just talking about how to, how to prepare this plan for getting some state funding. Okay. But the plan is there is money, there is little money in the line item, and the plan is to reallocate more money next year. Yeah, we just, I mean, I don't want to give you false expectations mm -hmm. that anything on this is going to happen this year. And um, because our staffing situation is such that that in and of itself, this is a big project that's mm -hmm. for this agency. We have to build this into our list of priorities, and we have a lot of projects. We have the community center, mm -hmm. we have the playground, we have um, a huge project. The bridge shelter. Yeah, the bridge shelter. Mm -hmm. So we have, I know you guys I'm just, I mean, I, I don't want to. Okay. Okay. And that's why we could get just doing one at a time. You know, so we could get one done right away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to waste money from band-aids any mm -hmm. longer. We're spending a lot of money mm -hmm. each year, you know, fixing and, and not allowing our citizens to be on that field, you know, because we're trying to maintain them for the students, and um, so our coaches are, you know, <laughs> they're all coaches over. want us to open up the fields. Well, they do <laughs> want us to open up the fields, and, yeah, okay. but, but, you know, when we're looking at the expenditure year over year, we could have paid for a lot of this, you know, years ago. But I understand, you know, well about it. Um, and that's why you and I talked about it, that we know that we can, um, we're working on the master plan for all of our sites, district-wide, so that, you know, everyone will know and we can give a projection about what, you know, today's costs are versus five years from now. What are those costs going to be? And so we're committed to doing that district-wide. Every school, so you'll be able to go in and our uh, Costa Mesa Sports Council will be able to go online and find out, and you, you know, will be able to say, okay, well, what's the general plan? And, uh, Are we, um, is that, when you say master plan, is that in the formal sense, or that's just in a conceptual sense? We're hoping at some point it'll be formal, but, you know, um, there's so many, yeah. you know, sticking, you know, for, I mean, like Newport Harbor, we're working on creating, you know, because we got amazing, Boosters and you know, you know, community foundations and millionaires that want to just throw money at. But we spent, Mr. Ferryman will attest to this. We spent a million and a half dollars tearing that stuff out in order to renovate Newport Harbor, and those were well-meaning, you know, folks that you know really supported. So, um, Harbor is kind of our second, third. So I think that's going to be our biggest challenge because we have fire lane. You know, swimming pools, a lot of sports, you know, a lot of baseball, soccer. And, uh, and so we'd like to just have a master plan to see what the vision will be, you know. And, um, and then we have all the stakeholders involved at Harker, which 
is very important. And, and then that way they have an idea and input, and, and then we can budget as we go and talk to the different. It's really a follow up on what cities do really well. And you establish standards for all of your facilities, mm -hmm. and you build to those standards, and you provide them to our cities. So that's kind of the concept we need to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to create the standards, is what we'll have there. There's still people on <coughs> to that fine, but everybody, every school should have this regardless of whether they get donations or whether it's funded by the district. So, mm -hmm. so uh, it's about standards, and it's about having a plan to get to those standards. Great. Okay. That's where we're at. So, that, I mean, on the, on the funding trail, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so, uh, the Tewiko California Field Renovation Project. Um, so, we recently, um, um, did um, an assessment um, about 18,000 it cost us for soil testing and irrigation assessment for the California and T. Winkle fields and I think Costa Mesa United is um, is um, part of this partner in this but I, the city is also this, this kind of goes um, hand in hand with um, the city used to make a, a donation of um, <coughs> It, at one point, it was 75000 for the three high schools each year. And then the last time you did that was 2017. And um, it went to the elementary school project. Well, that's a good, well, yeah. that 2017 money didn't go to later, but yeah. it went into the district. Right. And I don't believe that any of those projects have been done. No, they were. They were done. No, they're all, it's for basketball, court. Improvements, and I don't believe that they actually have been done. Yeah, I've seen. Some. But well, uh, there were a couple sites that they, ran, they did the worst sites, but everything was was slurried, and um, updates were done to to the elementary new backboards. New so, backboards. So there are. So several. you guys never got a. Re oh, where'd you go? You guys never what got What happened was okay. we didn't actually know mm. that you were going to use the money for that purpose. That was decided internally by staff, mm -hmm. and there were elementary schools that actually wanted to use the money for a different purpose, like audiovisual in their multi-purpose room, but they were never given the opportunity. The principals weren't uh, told to see what they wanted. It just no. was decided that it was going to be basketball um, back stuff. That we provide, we, we've been providing all the audiovisual. Well, there's schools that need improvements to audio. All they need to do is put in a request. Yeah. I think that, well, we can talk about this offline, but they for sure have. Yeah. Um, so um, the. I also think the thinking was that the f that because it came from the city, that if you use the money for something that would benefit all the kids in the city, because they come and use the playgrounds. We use the multi purpose rooms for media. That's yeah. The, that's the nexus. Yeah. So that would have that would have been okay for sure. Okay. Yeah, I know we're very uh, reticent to touch most of the multi-purpose rooms because they all need to be completely redone. Audiovisual. Yeah. They've done audiovisual yeah. at others, like Sonora. The boosters paid for that, yeah. so you can do it. I mean, audiovisual. Yeah, um, but I I think um, in the past the the money that went to each of the high schools, um, the 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 principal didn't necessarily decide how. It Oh sure, yeah. The principal met with the boosters and the and, and the, the coaches, yeah. and then they presented it to exactly. working with city staff. And in years past, Coast Mesa United. Um, so yeah, there was an active involvement with the principal. So I don't. I guess I don't know whether the T. Winkle California Field Renovation Project was something separate that the city was going to help us with, or whether it was part of the seventy-five thousand that we used. Actually, two hundred twenty-five thousand. That that one was not. Um, There's been no allocation of funds. That hasn't come to council. There's been no allocation of funds. It was a started as a previous conversation with mm -hmm. the prior city manager. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's worked through uh, the staff, but mm -hmm. it, there's never been an allocation. Um, any money that would have come for that project uh, would have come from the one point two five million dollars yeah. as the, the field. It's a field renovation mm -hmm. uh, account per se, which is the same money that the six point five got. So there's 625, again, I think it's a priority question, whether it's team and global fields. Um, I also think in the beginning, uh, the conversation was about sharing the cost, uh, and then mm -hmm. maybe moved to not 
and Costa Mesa cost. United was was going to kick in as well. They were going to help share the cost. I think it's, it's so a that project question. is now. Um, so I have two questions. So what is the future of um, of uh, funding seventy five thousand for school, and uh, what is the future of this? If it's not separate, you're saying it's part of this. Six hundred and twenty-five thousand. Could be. So one of my, yeah, you know, much to my chagrin, that um, school allocation is not in the budget this year. Okay. Which I was disappointed about when we got our proposed budget, but it's just a matter of prioritizing the budget um, this year with our new finance director, who is amazing and she's very, very experienced. She took, uh, you know, we had interim finance directors for many years. We found a lot of errors in how money was being um, recorded. allocated, allocated, and recorded. recorded. And so there were some accounts that mm. that the council, you know, we just get the budget book. We don't, you know, we're not in the back of the house. Um, <laughs> so there were I get that. <laughs> some accounts where uh, it looked like cash, but it was equity. Mm. And so we were spending through the equity, which was not cash, and so that was coming out of other accounts. Mm -hmm. So we are, we've are we got that all fixed, that's the good news. Mm -hmm. um, and we have spent a lot of time, as you have read in the paper, uh, <laughs> going through our budget, mm -hmm. and we now have this amazing new city manager who has a really good finance background, and she was the <laughs> finance director in uh, Long Beach, and, or probably I'm telling you the title wrong, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, and so we feel like we're gonna be in a place where we can have better systems, better controls, and a more transparency and accountability as to exactly how much money we actually have, mm -hmm. and then we can establish our priorities. So this year is a little bit of a painful year for yeah. us, honestly, but we did get some funding from our Sunday woman. We got a million dollars infused to our budget for a line park playground. Mm -hmm. And that's going to actually help us to get a, another grant that we're working on. Um, so anytime we can get outside money in, then we can well, divert yeah, those funds to something else that we all want to pay for locally. But that's kind of where we are. And I When's a good, well, when is a good time for us to get together? Let's just get on the calendar. Can you get us set up on the calendar and we can meet with City Manager, John, whomever. Okay, well, what would be helpful, because there is a contribution here, mm -hmm. and that is in the fact that park fees, the city collects millions of dollars in park fees, and we wonder what that money is going for. Uh, well, we pay for staff. I mean, we're paying for staff with this. We don't make any money on But park fees park. are supposed to be for the Oh, park fees, you're talking about development fees? Yeah, park fees. Yeah. 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 We've allocated all that money for so the expansion of, of park fees. But we used to meet uh, on a regular basis, and we we haven't for a long time. And it would be great to start that again. The district and the uh, you can come if you want. Water boards. <laughs> I think that's what this meeting morphed into. Yeah, when it did. I became mayor. Yeah, it morphed into yeah, this. yeah. This was in 2017. Yeah. 
So if you want us to have that meeting that we used to have again. I, I do. I, I mean, I think well, it would be staff valuable. Staff, 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 staff are still being reported. That's we true. But I don't think that actually works. Yeah. You know, because we're the decision makers, and so we, we could help guide <laughs> what the priorities are if we know about it. Yeah. Well, and that's all. Exactly. I don't know if another meeting. Mm. You know, trust me, and, and I do have faith in our staff, you know, on both the city. Oh, don't misunderstand me. I have faith in our staff. I know you do. <laughs> but I'm saying I don't need to be there, but I would like to have the information. Because then we, if everyone's on the same page when we go out there, you know, I know school boards are the lowest life form in politics, but, but we are, oh no, I mean, I've been on the board long enough to know that parents come to me at the last, uh, at the last uh, pitch, you know, and just say, we were promised new irrigation, and we were told by this person, that person, and well, here's we're excited. The we're council's waiting. never voted on that. Well, and we don't know that. It's all the same. That's what we have not. Yeah. If somebody promised that, John and I don't know about it. Well, well, I, 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 remember that, Gordon, I, right? I remember last year when I was having this discussion, I think with Gordon, mm -hmm. and it was my understanding that in the 2018-2019 budget, and I must have seen it in the budget, that there was something in the budget for the oh, irrigation. Yeah. And, then, and so it was in 2018-2019, did get spent, mm -hmm. and then it did get included in the 2019-2019. And that's all I'm saying is we're, we we understand. Just that's so happening. you guys understand, the 2019 we're going to get to it. Just one quick thing. 2019-2020 mm -hmm. budget, mm -hmm. it was is challenging, and there's there's two two primary, uh, three kind of one secondary reason they're challenging. Number one is we took on the homeless issue. Mm -hmm. and we established a bridge shelter. Mm -hmm. We added 2.5 million dollars in that operating costs. Number one. Number two, as as uh, Katrina said, we have uh, uh, Kelly uh, uh, Telper, who's our new finance director, and she's implementing different reforms. And so it, it's all t very technical, even some of it, uh, I don't understand if you can imagine that. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. but still, but still those things are, are we're cr creating some adjustments and, in, in our budget, and then the la no last thing is we, helpful for us. we gave the um, we, we basically gave each police officer an eighteen thousand dollar raise. Mm -hmm. so that cost about three million dollars. That was so we, recruitment retention. So when you talk when when you hear in the world about cutting police officers, always remember that that's not a given. We gave each one of them fifteen hundred dollars a month additional to their bucket. Well, I, I, I would need to talk to the rest of the board, but I, for one, think that somebody from council and somebody or multiple from um, the school board trustees need to be in some of the meetings. That Can this be a staff. lunch meeting? Can we have a lunch meeting? Sure, if okay. we have it here. <laughs> Why don't we do this? We'll have Connor and um, Lorianne can work together to establish a time when yeah. to meet with the yeah. We'll start there. Okay. And, and obviously, good. Fred, you know. Yeah. Okay. Whatever you want. To be. <laughs> then the last ask, you know, because I know some people have to leave, is um, is the um, Sisters for City program. Um, so I know the last two um, budget years, um, the city used to give, uh, used to help. Um, with the airfare and they used to um, actually scholarship one or two kids that wanted to go. Everybody knows with the Sister City program, okay. Um, that one or two kids that couldn't afford to go, they would um, uh, scholarship them. And the, fun, the funding, the only money that they usually um, need is airfare. I mean, when they're there, maybe a little bit spending money for some of the stuff that uh, some things they do, but mostly they're in the classroom for three weeks because their school is in session. They come and um, and they stay with host families, so that's not an expense. Um, so that kind of stopped as well, and I'm not sure why. And um, 
So I was just. It was funded last year. There was $20,000 allocated. They told me they got no funding year. last year. No, there was funding allocated um, 20000 a year. This is the first year, and I believe, I don't know, and I'd have to ask, where's Justin? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, Justin. They I, told me they haven't got any funding for last year or this year. It's okay. summer. It's like this summer or last summer. They got, they, they received no funding. I'm pretty sure. I'd have to look. It actually it's falls under the city manager's yeah. um, budget, but I'd have to look. Let's follow up on that, because that's really, they need to be. Is that part of the discretionary? <laughs> well, okay, so corrected is <laughs> maybe not the right word, but it has to be budgeted. Yeah. Um, and so we, it's 20000 that is allocated. It's for not all just sister. to. It's not just to Estonia, it's not just for Australia. No. It's 20,000 that was allocated for China, for mm -hmm. Costa Mesa High School. Mm -hmm. It's 20,000 that's allocated for um, Newport Harbor, for Australia, and mm -hmm. Estonia, for mm -hmm. Australia. It's all, it's 20,000 yeah. for all three. For schools. all three. And so there's a, Dan Baker used to be in charge of that, he's no longer with the city. Um, so we just, it's one of those things on our really? list that we've got to figure out who's got the file and where is it at this point? And maybe it was a, during the transition, maybe that's the problem. Well, when I said corrected, I think the public needs to be corrected. If you, in fact, did allocate that and we did receive it, you know, yes or no, doesn't matter. I think that, you know, just we can correct search the information needs to be yeah. can, I, so, can I ask the Australian, um, Pres club president, because this isn't a school program. So can I ask, they're completely independent. And um, they came, they presented at our council meeting. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, they, they, they come every, meeting. yeah, you got, they come every time. Yeah. But that's part of our sister city program. So it's exactly. shocking to me to hear that they, 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 they say they didn't get anything. Well, maybe they didn't apply right or something. I don't know. I don't know. So, so I was going to. Can I? Can I have um, the president contact you or uh, whomever to set up? To, you know, I don't really necessarily want to be the conduit. conduit. Yeah, I don't think this is in Justin's court, though. No, no, no. Yeah. So I, I'll just jump in here uh -huh. now. Seems like a good time. Yeah. I think that we need to circle the wagons internally. Mm -hmm really put together a nice comprehensive report of everything that's funding that's school district related. That would be great. Right? <laughs> we should have an we should have a report that we're we have quarterly that we can look at. We can look at it each year, what we planned, whether we executed it or not, were we able to finalize projects, what status the project is in. I think we need to be able to work from data that's reliable mm -hmm. that and we're communicating often and early mm -hmm. on things so that you're not hearing it here. Preferably, so or out I like there. <laughs> or right there. I like the idea of reengaging more often. Mm -hmm. We could even start monthly. Mm -hmm. I think it really should be Fred and I to start with staff because sure. mm -hmm. I think we need to get to the common set of facts, mm -hmm. and then I think we can evolve. Okay, um, that's fine. We're totally open. Yeah. Okay. Um, the only concern I would have about that plan is that maybe the common set of facts aren't known by. They might be known by board president and the mayor. <laughs> so that's they may, may not be known. They they know, they may not like I may know more than than others because mm -hmm. of my longevity and role in both the capacity of school board member and right. I'm talking strictly yeah. about what's in the budget. That should oh, not yeah, be yeah, that yeah, should yeah, not that, be ambiguous. Definitely. So the right. fact that we're having this conversation and um, saying did they or did they right, that yeah. should not be an ambiguous yeah. thing. We should know yeah. what's in. Yeah. And so I'll drill down to make sure that we can put that and together. Our is just technical stuff. We don't make we, we don't come with any mm -hmm. presentation having big yeah. right. Right. So we just work out the details once everything's been approved by the council or by the board. I would be interested to know too, uh, at least going back to the 2017-2018 budget year, those items that you're referring yeah. and to. And we'll include that. In the what, what has been funded on those years, see what the trend is. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see that come back mm -hmm. earlier, but then also be shared at the next one of these meetings. October. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, the rest of you. <laughs> so. You know, uh, <clears throat> that group used to have a uh, display at the Sister uh, Pride every year, and I know they raised quite a bit of money. That, that thing. I, I, don't, I, I don't think I saw them the last year or two. But 
No, they were they were there. Mm -hmm. So so one of the things you might consider just they don't make that much money, by the way. <laughs> two things in terms of funding that, and maybe they're already doing it, but it seems like Travel Costa Mesa might be interested in subsidizing. They used to. Yeah. Well, that's, that's where the money used to come. From. That's where it came, it came from. through. Yeah, Travel that's Costa where the money Mesa. Came from. Okay, well then that's okay. then the other thing is. Um, that's, yeah, that was what we I'm have thinking. this uh, new group that's coming into Costa Mesa, EF Education First. You probably heard about that. Uh, they're going in where the Trinity Broadcasting Network was. And so I think oh, they're cool. looking for ways to participate in the community, and this might be a good way to do it. That would be great. Because they're inter it's in that's educational, inter international um, uh, exchange <coughs> programs. You guys should really, in general, mm -hmm. get get to know what they're doing. We could facilitate that. Okay, that would be great. And then one other, um, you know, when we first started the parking lot fundraiser, yes. the money that was raised in the parking lot during the fair mm -hmm. was able to be used by the students and the families to travel to the sister city program. Mm -hmm. And then the district now doesn't allow that. No, the state law doesn't allow us to use any district funds, whether it's ASP or, or general funds or out-of-state travel. We've never been allowed to Unless it's a unless it's a school sponsored program. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? They do get um, uh, the Australian Club gets three I believe three or four days during the Chargers. Thing. The Chargers parking. That was gonna be my question. Was it the Chargers? <laughs> yeah, they get they I think last year they got nine or something and this year I'm trying to remember what she said this year they she texted me they only got three or five and they it was Jennifer Knapp that texted me and why was that and um, and I inquired and it was because there was just more people in the pot you know that they were splitting the money for but that's up to the is that the foundation I'm not sure that's the foundation that's the foundation yeah I don't know what they're doing but that's they decide yeah, that. they decide that. So, and then either one of the schools has been their gala last year, so I think there was probably a little less funding there as well, probably because of that. Either one, uh, we did our gala last year. Both schools? I don't know about Costa Mesa, but um, I'd be surprised if they didn't do no, it. They did. I usually they buy did. something. So at, you're yeah. thinking of like a formal gala, Justin? They yeah. they re. <laughs> They kind of toned it down so you get more people to come. We did, we did in, in Estancia. I don't know. Estancia have our gala? No, yeah, yeah, we have our gala. Yeah. Okay. okay, sorry. Moving on. sustainability within our community. Um, and as you know, we opened our bridge shelter April 5th. We now have, are you gonna tell me a different number? 12? Hey, number 12 people. Okay, 12 uh, individuals in permanent supportive housing, which is, that is uh, enormous. Yeah. That's, uh, that's really, that's actually, for those really good who do not know, that's really hard to do, and our staff deserves a lot of credit for all that work. Um, and, then we, you know, we open the library. I encourage you to go to the library if you haven't yet. It's just amazing. We have activities now out on the lawn. My favorite Instagram post by a local team recently was, um, you know, Rachel Corcorian, one of your ASB students, president. Uh, she and her friends had a picnic in the park in front of the library, and she posted it. It was so great to see our park at Lions Park being used of a park again. So by, by the way, my daughter was at that picture. That's right. And, and if you see the post, that's her hand. <laughs> <laughs> that's her hand. 
Oh. You can actually get a picture of her. Hey, model. Yeah, hey, we have model. our new city manager. She's our first uh, woman city manager in the city of Costa Mesa. Also, what's great, she speaks Spanish, so that's great for our Spanish-speaking family. Um, and comes highly with lots of great background, and I recommend it, um, and we're looking forward to really moving the city forward. Went to Columbia University, got two degrees from Columbia <laughs> University. Wow, and let talking me, about you in third person. <laughs> and let me, and let me, let me just share, share something with, with the school board members and the superintendent. She told me, I said, well, how do you, how'd you get to Columbia? She, she said she went to uh, public high school in the Bronx and, and won an award for, for an English essay and got noticed by her teachers there and encouraged by an English teacher to apply to the Ivy League. And from that, the rest is history. And here she is with us, uh, not, none of which probably went to a school like uh, Columbia, but, were, were, but he, his daughter's going to Harvard, so that's pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we also uh, start our Chargers training camp next week, uh, July 25th. And um, my son is home for the summer from UCSB, and he came in this morning at 7.03, and he said, what the heck is going on? Because they're building the <laughs> stands. <laughs> He's like, what the heck? I go, welcome to our world. <laughs> um, but anyway, we are excited about that. There's an opportunity also. Um, staff might not know about this, Connor knows. Um, ABC News is going to be doing a little, uh, they have a pop up there for four days uh, from at 5 a.m. and then 11 and at 5.30. And so they would like to have individuals who have any partnership with the Chargers possibly mm. come and be on the, you know, do a little two minute interview. So if um, I had suggested that we have our uh, two football teams, Mm -hmm. um, the coaches come out and they can be interviewed, maybe some of the players could be standing behind their cheerleaders, whatever. Uh, so if, yeah. if it's okay, if our city staff can partner with your coaches to make that happen, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, this is gonna happen on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah okay. Wednesday. Talk to him. Yeah. Uh, Talk to him. And yeah. then also um, we are we passed, much like the school district, and thank you for your leadership there, uh, organics first, so we are not using pesticides in our parks anymore, so it makes it safer for our families. Um, we also um, have, uh, I'm sure the staff can go over all these uh, capital improvement projects that might relate to the school district, so why don't you dovetail into that? Also, no styrofoam? Oh yeah, no styrofoam. No styrofoam at the golf course, no styrofoam at any city facility. And, we've, and we're working on uh, working with the golf course also and trying to make some improvements there. Every council member has a hydro flask. Mm -hmm. and, and soon Lorianne will have one also. Yes, <laughs> and I was very disappointed that I didn't get one. <laughs> They're so heavy. We travel to Sacramento <laughs> and with the assistance of our new assembly woman, mm -hmm. um, there's a bill that's pending, I'm not sure where it is right now, but um, working on our sober living home reform and she's the first since I've been involved in this effort um, to get it out of the Senate Health Committee. This is huge because normally you get killed in Senate Health Committee. She got it out of the Senate Health Committee and this is a bill that would actually allow us to have a little bit more local control. And also, you might have heard that we won our lawsuit regarding the civil living home um, challenges in federal court at the jury court level, and then we had this other pending issue related to a judge um, decision that was related to our ordinance. The judge, uh, we won that just Tuesday, we learned, and so we, we won the whole case now on judgment in favor of the city. That's huge for us because that sends a strong message to unscrupulous operators that we're willing to go to bat, we're gonna fight to the bitter end, and we're gonna win. <laughs> it only cost us $5 million. I know. <laughs> oh, well. And so that's also a part of the budget situation. Yes. I mean, it, yeah. it's an investment in our community. I also, heard, I also read the paper about the uh, needle exchange program you, you extended. Right, right. we extended yeah. the moratorium, and the trial on that got pushed to, to, to March. March. Now, of course, 
uh, Mayor Foley has covered a lot of ground, but she buried the lead because we also had a great Independence Day, <laughs> Independence Day celebration. Harley Ruda gave a uh, read from the Declaration of Independence. We had the Tijuana dogs. We had three, three to four thousand people there. Burrito eating contest, rib eating contest, and a dunk tank. I with, heard a, with me and Councilmember Chavez on his birthday, and of course the mayor. And we raised, I don't know, we raised some money for soy through the dunk tank. Oh, good. The next, I was next year, Gordon you guys can there. all participate in the there. dunk tank. <laughs> Gordon, you missed a chance to dunk, dunk the mayor. I know you missed out. Well, actually, more Gordon in the country. Could have raised some more money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. No comment. <laughs> I'll, I'll just add in relation to the homeless shelter. Uh, while the, the temporary shelter is in operation, we're also moving forward with the design and what will be the construction of the permanent shelter. Uh, so the council approved design firm earlier this month. We're working at a very rapid pace to get the, the design documents all put together, having uh, kind of three time a week meetings with us, with our internal team and with the designers. So moving forward very quickly on that. Um, our CEQA document is, has just been released for the 30 day period. Uh, so the planning commission will uh, be brought into the poll in August. The city council will then consider the code amendments um, in September, as long as we stick to our timeline. Um, we anticipate then still opening Permanent shelter by April of 2020. So, so, so it's a really tight timeline, and we'll be coordinating with the district and the water district so as to make sure that we can do the And as it relates to Adams Avenue, we have a we have a project design that will uh, improve Adams Avenue. Yeah. Uh, it will create a multi-purpose trail system as well as some medians help to slow down some traffic. Mm -hmm. And it's um, it's uh, you know, we don't have any sidewalks or anything on that. Um, we're we're in our second time to request a grant, right? So we're we're hoping that we're each time we request this grant and we get denied, we learn what we need to do differently next time. So we're trying to do that to better our point to get more points, and so we're working on that right now. And that might be a project in the near future. There may be some minor changes, but you know, this is uh, for most part it's accurate. I mean, so I did more than six million dollars of funding for the, for this study. Um, keep in mind that we have a backlog of projects that we're looking to, so we have a lot of work that's happening between now and uh, to the next year. Um, I have had I have had a few projects um, in the in the back. These are again from the budget and. There is a little fact sheet in the back. Yeah. And if you look at this, uh, this spreadsheet, uh, Dr. Navarro, you were talking about the park fees fund. There's a line across the top park fees fund, and you can see under parks that in this budget we have you know, one, a million fifty budgeted for park improvements out of those park fees. That's just in this budget. We have you know, five exactly. other budgets.
are coming here, would be including Placentia, Pomona, as well as small streets in the Mason and North neighborhood. Uh, so that's our next project. Uh, this year, we're doing a lot of